Thank you very much. Uh, talking about the key challenges in responding to uh, security threats, uh, I would say um, when we started in ECOWAS around 2003, it was very hard for the first years. You come up with reports and all the member states do was to come and tell you, no, I don't agree. This did not happen in my country and so on, because they all have this idea of uh, uh, willing to, first of all, protect the, uh, their country so much that they do not want to know if actually uh, there's any uh, issue going on in these countries. And also we should know that the multifaceted and multidimensional nature of threats uh, definitely require a coordinated long-term and resource intensive response. Insecurity is often, oftentimes triggered by structural and institutional factors that are very hard to address. And they include socioeconomic pressures, climate related pressures, community fragmentations and so on. But it is important to know that in Africa, especially uh, what we call nations, they preceded what we call in today states. What I'm saying is that the nations existed long before we came into the actual uh, dispositions of today uh, of states with uh, what goes with it, democracy and, and, and the rest of it. And as such, sovereignty is still, you know, a, a question. You may have the best early warning, but if you're not allowed to come into Guinea or Burkina Faso or Mali to link early warning with early response, then of course, uh, all kinds of things will continue to happen, but you do not have any other means, you know, to, to do it. In the history of peacekeeping, however, in Africa, ECOWAS was the first organization to engage in joint action with the UN for the resolution of conflict within West Africa, indicating a relatively strong supranational local standing. Conversely, though ECOWAS has enshrined principles of co convergence in terms of constitutional order, rule of law and human rights in its protocols, particularly in the 2001 protocol relating to the democracy and govern good governance, yet the region has witnessed three coup d'etats uh, recently, and of course, so many uh, other uh, governance-related uh, uh, challenges uh, that you ask yourself at the end of the day uh, if really uh, uh, we're getting there, you know, or not. You can move forward. So these, those are the things that I could say regarding uh, the issue of uh, uh, sovereignty, which is uh, the hardcore, you know, it is the real barrier to some of the, the, the things we want to do. Even though we've defined some ways to go around, around it, you know, uh, with respect to uh, cert certain forms of disorders. The role of early warning in managing security threats uh, in the region, of course, uh, early warning is about enhancing what we call the anticipation, the preparedness, and early response to threats to security in the region. Specifically, ECOWARN tries to employ empirical data to conduct qualitative and quantitative analysis and assessments of threats to security. It engages civil society for strategic partnership. It develops scenarios related to identified threats to enable decision makers plan and take preventive or mitigating response measures. It provides early warning alerts to low intensity conflicts to incite early response, thereby limiting the potential for escalation into full-blown conflict. It prov offers prevention 
or mitigation response options and recommendations. Regarding the differences between early warning and intelligent systems, uh, thanks to my friend Kamlos, he has well visited the subject matter. We just see that uh, when we're dealing with early warning, mostly we're dealing with what we call open source data. Whereas intelligence tries to uh, function based on data gathered uh, through covert means, such as interception of communication, etc. We make use of overt approach, while intelligence uses mostly covert approach. In early warning, we say it is people centric. As Kamala say, intelligence is more uh, state centric. Early warning for us involve multiple non-state actors, especially the civil society organizations, whereas for intelligence is mostly restricted ac access, typically within the state actors and government agencies. For early warning, we say it's generally most effective when information and alerts is widely disseminated. But for intelligence, it is when information is more uh, restricted. Now, talking about the closer relationships between Rex uh, in Africa, of course, this is uh, very important. And I think as far back as 2008, it was well established by the, the African Union. And like I said, when it is very important, the directors themselves do participate in uh, meetings where we try to exchange experience and we try also to look at the future, to develop common roadmaps, to develop activities such as joint analysis and so on. And uh, of course, it's very important, but the issue of lessons learned is very uh, uh, interesting. And uh, it is through these meetings which are happening twice a year uh, in any country in West Africa, supported by the African Union, where these kind of things happen. And of course, what it, it leads to is deeper and broader consult consultation and dialogue between RECs for the strategic prioritization of policies and programs that build towards greater use of the signals from early warning in policy making and pragmatic, pro programmatic coordination and delivery of peace and stabilization initiatives. The promotion of information sharing and knowledge generation, especially on cross-regional issues, but also knowledge sharing on best practices and lessons learned. Now, leveraging the early warning system, early warning system can be leveraged by African governments and security sector leaders in a number of ways, including understanding the, the trends that portend for insecurity and humanitarian crisis, employing the empirical data emanating from early warning systems to deploy well-informed policies and initiatives. Recently in ECOWON, we are working with what we call the development of a, a human security index. This human security index based on fragility studies is going to enable us uh, move the next step because today we have seen that with the engagement of member states at the ambassadorial level, at the ministerial level, we are able to provide them with statistics that today they do not so much contest and it enables us to go the next step with, through the Human Security Index, which is now going to be a tool that will enable the classification and comparison of the way our member states are responding to, to conflict. Uh, of course, uh, it will go uh, much deeper to also identify not only threats, but also the reason why early warning is not being linked to early response. And of course, through that form of classification, we'll be able to tell them 
uh, where are the fragility areas, I mean, the vulnerable, uh, vulnerable areas, uh, and so on. And in the long term, this will become what we call a programmatic tool or uh, simply a budgeting tool. Because once you are able to identify where your uh, vulnerabilities are, you know, you can understand that uh, you already have uh, a tool that you can use, you know, for planning and, uh, and budgeting. But also strengthening national capacity for conflict prevention by building the skills of and developing closer collaboration among national actors, including civil society and communities to facilitate early response to challenges. In uh, ECOWAS, we have established what we call national early warning mechanisms for this purpose. These mechanisms will enable uh, linking early warning and early response through the identification of response actors within the state, let it be uh, from government institutions, from civil society organizations, from community, uh, from development partners, and so on, to really be able to sit up together and provide you know, the solutions that are required to identify uh, threats. So this is how uh, we are moving around in uh, the uh, uh, West African uh, region. And we do hope by the end of uh, 2003, we'll be able to have this uh, tool already available. And of course, it will be something uh, we will share with other regional uh, uh, communities uh, to enable us uh, uh, go in the, in, the, in, the, in the same direction. 